It's music theory online. Let's learn some theory online by watching modules online with music theory online. Hi again, everybody. I hope you enjoyed listening to the Gregorian chant. See how much our music has changed over the last 1,500 to 2,000 years. The first screen that you're looking at is what early notation actually looked like. When we look at it now, it's very difficult to imagine what it actually sounded like. Back at this time, Everything was passed on orally, which means that the teacher would teach the student how to sing these various chants. Then that student would teach his student, and it wasn't written down for quite a number of years. When they started writing it down, it was really to help remember what the sounds were like, but it was still strongly oral in its tradition. As notation became better, the oral tradition became less important and the written tradition became more important. Because these squiggles were so difficult to interpret, and because these squiggles were also just used as a memory aid for the oral tradition, notation became more and more important, and it became more and more precise. We're going to look at some of these slides just so you can see how notation has changed over the years. These squiggles above the words would help the performer know whether or not the pitch would go higher or lower. This was still primarily an oral tradition which was passed down. However, these little markings would help the performer know and remember how the piece would go. With a little bit of memory help from those squiggles. I think this is a really, really pretty slide with the pink, with the red, really not pink, but the red color and uh, brown. I think it looks really, really pretty. But you can see in this, again, you have those funny squiggles above the text. So again, it's primarily oral with some memory help with those funny little squiggles. However, it would be very hard to tell if your pitch would be higher or if it would be lower, and also which notes go with which syllables. Here's the much more advanced way where you can see we have our four lines, which is the beginning of the staff as we know it today. You see there's even lines that you could take as bar lines almost. You see those? It also, at the end of the lines, it just looks like it's a check mark. Well, it's not a check mark. It, it's a way of writing different types of notes. Notice how some of the little square notes are close together. Some are further apart. Some are connected, some are one on top of another. They're written in all different ways. Once the notation was to this point, it was getting much easier for people to know what the music should sound like, and the oral tradition wasn't quite as important as it was on some of our earlier slides. Over time, it became more and more important for us to have more lines to more accurately be able to say what the pitch was. And that's where we came up with the grand staff. When you look at the grand staff, it was also called or can be called the great staff, there are a lot of lines here. As a matter of fact, there are 11 lines. This is a huge improvement from our four lines. However, when you first look at this, it can be a bit of a challenge to read because that's a lot of lines to take in. Eventually what happened is the middle line was taken out. The middle line is where middle C is. The middle C line was taken out. It made our staff much easier to read because we have five lines, a space, and five lines. And of course, the top five lines became the treble clef, and the bottom five lines became the bass clef, and middle C, we just add a line whenever we need it. The early treble clef was not written as the treble clef that we know today. It was written as a letter G. 
You can see on the slide the first letter looks like a G, and then you can see how it changed over the years to become more like the treble clef that we know today. Do you notice that solid line that's going right across all of our clefs? Is the G line. So do you see how the treble clef or the G clef is showing you where the G is? When you draw our modern treble clef, there's a few things that you always want to remember when you're drawing it. That line we saw on the previous slide is still there. That's our G line. So what you want to do is make a little note on that G line, which is line 2. That way that G becomes one of our landmark notes. Make sure that the circle part at the bottom is sitting right on the first line. And also the top is extending by one space. So the size of the top of your treble clef is going to be determined by how, how much space there is on your staff. So it's also called the G clef and it shows us where G is. Here we have the bass clef. The bass clef is the bottom five lines of the grand staff and it was often called the F clef because many, many years ago what musicians used to do is write an old German capital F on the fourth line. Again, that fourth line is the F line, so that becomes one of our landmarks for naming notes. You can see on this slide how the F clef or the bass clef changed over the years to become more rounded and where we had two slashes many years ago it became two dots and those two dots are on the top and the bottom of the F line. So that makes it really easy to know where F is in the bass clef which makes it one of our landmarks. So now we've talked about the treble clef and the bass clef or the G clef and the F clef. Now we're going to look at bar lines. Bar lines, as you know, are simply a way of dividing the staff into smaller sections. We have single bar lines, and our single bar lines are putting our notes and rests into bars or into measures of music, which is based on the time signature. Double bar lines are used between sections of music to indicate a break. So if you have a, a larger piece of music, you might find at the end of a section there's a double bar line. The final double bar line is used to indicate that it's the end of a piece or the end of the music. And that last line is much thicker than it is in any of the other bar lines. So we now can show pitch in the treble clef and the bass clef. We also know that bar lines group our music together and just as a review we want to review where the landmarks are. So the three landmarks that we're looking at right now is the F in the bass clef, remember our F clef, and that F line is between the two dots in the bass clef. Also, what I call the nose of the bass clef, which is that little round part at the beginning, is also on line four, which is the F line. So that gives us the F as a landmark, the G in Mrs. Treble Clef or in the G clef, where the G curls and makes a note, and then we have middle C. If middle C is written for the treble clef, then you're going to write that ledger line a little bit closer to the treble clef. If it's going to be played in the bass clef, then you're going to write that middle C closer to the bass clef. Sometimes it can be really confusing when you're looking at notes if you don't see how it relates to the keyboard. But if I show you this, it should become really logical for you. Do you notice how every time we go from a line to a space or a space to a line or we go up one step on the grand staff we also go up one key on the keyboard. Do you notice as well that when notes are written lower on the staff they would be played lower on the keyboard. If it's written in the middle of the staff you play it in the middle of the keyboard and if it's higher on the staff 
you'd be playing it higher on the keyboard. When you look at this, you'll notice that the very bottom note on the grand staff here is A, where really G would be on that very first line in the bass clef. But there are two more octaves, like there's like 60 notes lower that don't fit on the grand staff. The same with the treble clef. There's a whole bunch of notes higher than that tie G that just don't fit. So what do we do with those notes? Well, musicians being the brilliant people that they are, what we do is we add ledger lines. What a ledger line does is just extends the grand staff as high or as low as you need to go. Do you see on this slide, you actually have these lines that are only for one note. Now the ledger lines themselves are the same distance space-wise as they are in the staff. Really what you're doing is you're just extending the staff for the one particular note that needs to be extended. Here we have ledger lines in the treble clef. You see the first set of ledger lines are going higher. Those are called outer ledger lines because they're going outside of the grand staff and much higher. When you write ledger lines, you only need to write as many lines as you need. So when you look at G, do you see that there's no line above it? You don't need anything else there. The A is pretty self-explanatory. The B, you have your line, but there's nothing above the B. The only one you need is that one ledger line. With C, you have two ledger lines. With D, you have the two ledger lines and then the note, but you don't put a line above it. Notice the spacing is the same as it is in the staff. It's not bigger and it's not smaller. It's the very same. So those are our outer ledger lines. Then if you look on the second part of this slide, you'll see what we call inner ledger lines. These are ledger lines that are within the grand staff. They're notes that would normally be played in the bass clef, often with your left hand. So they're called inner ledger lines. They follow the same process. What you're doing is you're extending your staff lower into the bass clef. Why would you do this instead of just writing it in the treble clef? Maybe you're working with just one staff. Maybe you're only working with the treble clef. Maybe you want your right hand to play notes way down lower. There's a number of reasons why you may need those inner ledger lines. The same process applies here in the bass clef. The first group of notes that you see going higher in the bass clef are inner ledger lines. They're inner ledger lines because they're still within the grand staff range. They're often notes that you would find in the treble clef. And then the outer ledger lines are the ones that are going lower and they're lower and not within the range of the grand staff. Again, notice that the spacing is the same for the ledger lines as it is in the staff. Also, notice that there are no extra lines. You're only drawing the ledger lines long enough for the one particular note, and you're also only going to add as many lines as is absolutely necessary. Although there's a number of ledger lines written, notice that there, none of those lines are connected. Okay? You have to draw those ledger lines for every single note. We were talking about landmarks earlier. We have some landmarks that are going to really, really help you with ledger lines. And those landmarks are C's. In the treble clef, if you go up to the second ledger line, that second ledger line note is high C. If you go to the bass clef, the second ledger line down is also C. That's low C. Now, if you can remember that, it's going to make it so much easier when you have to name notes that are high up or really low on ledger lines. Just go to your C and count higher or maybe count lower. It depends on which direction you're going. So that gives you two more landmarks. You have your G 
in Mrs. Treble clef. You've got your F clef, F. You have middle C. Now you have high C in the treble clef and high C in the bass clef as your landmarks. So just a few little things to remember when you're writing your ledger lines. As I've said before, they must be the same distance apart as the lines on the staff. Make those ledger lines just long enough for the note head. If you have five ledger lines in a row, every single note has to have their own lines. Use only the ledger lines you need, no extras. When middle C is in the treble clef, which means that it's on a ledger line, if you want to play it with the treble clef, you want to write it closer to the treble clef. When it's in the bass clef, write it closer to the bass clef staff. So today we've covered drawing treble clefs, drawing bass clefs, plus the history of the treble clef and the bass clef. We've covered bar lines and the different types of bar lines that you have. We've looked at the grand staff and the origins of the grand staff and even what music looked like before there was a grand staff. We looked at landmarks for our notes to help us find them, how the notes and the keyboard come together and of course we did lots of looking at ledger lines. So that's going to give you lots of work to do this week so you can work on your assignments of drawing your clefts, naming ledger lines, being comfortable with your bar lines and then next time we're going to move on to something else. I hope you have a super duper week. Bye! It's Music Theory Online Let's learn some theory Online By watching modules Online With Music Theory Online